I was just about to make some Christmas candy, but I want to see if I can figure out a way first. I've got all these little uh, decorations that Granny made. You can see that's Pap on that one. Here's one. Let's see. Oh, this is Miss Cindy on this one. Uh, Granny made these several years ago. You can tell by how young the girls are. There's Katie on that one. If you can see that. Here's Granny herself. She made herself one. Cute. Here's my nephew, Mark. <laughs> nephew Mark. I'm running out of hands. There's Matt and his. Here's my nephew, Ben. And I've got Corey. Whoops, me and Corey are hooked together, I think. There's Corey. He's cute. Here's me. I had a different hairstyle in those days, you can see. There's Paul, Brother Paul, my sister-in-law, Kim, my niece, April. She looks a lot like Corey and Katie, and my brother, Steve. So that was all of us before there was any grandkids. Now there's grandkids and grandsons. Mark and Ben are both married. Of course, April's married. Corey's married. So there's other ones. But um, I come across these back in the summer. Me and Granny were down there looking around in a back room, and we found these. And I said, let me take those home with me. And I meant to put them on the tree, but I, I had them in a different place, and I didn't see them when I was decorating the tree. But I think it'd be really neat if I could hang them up in here somewhere. And then everybody, when they come for Christmas, they would have fun looking back through them, kind of looking at the at the old photos. I've seen this really neat um, ideal, and I've not done it, and I probably won't have time to do it. But where at, for the holidays, because it is such a part of tradition, you know, when you're thinking about traditions and stuff at Christmas, makes you think of family and memories and days gone by and people like Pap that are no longer with us. But they had took pictures and they like put them under glass, like cut a piece of glass cut maybe and put it on their uh, kitchen island or a coffee table or something like that and put all those old pictures. That was one thing. So just so people could look and say, remember grandma, remember Aunt Susie? Um, and then another one was they hung them. I like just kind of clipped them to a string. So I thought that would be really neat because those the holidays is when you're thinking about all those wonderful people. So I'm gonna try to figure out where I can put these. I may have to wait for Matt to help me with that though. I'm gonna do some Christmas cooking today, some Christmas goodies I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make Granny's wonderful sugar cookies. I made the dough yesterday and I've got it in the refrigerator chilling. I'm gonna get Katie to help me with that. And as you can, if you hear a hammer, that's her. So she's in the basement right now working in her dungeon as she calls it. Um, so once she comes up, we'll, we'll tackle the cookies together. But I'm gonna make some other things. I think I'm gonna make some haystacks. I have a video about that. I have one about the sugar cookies. If I didn't say that, I'll link to those both so you can see them. Also, I think I'm gonna try to make some peanut butter fudge. It's been years since I made it. But this year, we've been already been to Christmas at the Presley's, and while I was there, I was thinking of Matt's Uncle Charles. He, year after year after year, he brought his peanut butter fudge, and it was the best, and I look forward to it every year. Sadly, he passed away a, a couple of years ago, so we don't get his fudge anymore, but I, I was thinking about him and thinking, well, why don't I try to make it? So I think I'm gonna try to make some of that. And I would love to make some divinity. I've made it, I guess it was last year, I made some cherry divinity and it was really good. But I don't know if I'll get that done today. But I'm going to start with the peanut butter fudge. Gonna help me with the cookies? Yeah, I'm just getting this stuff into the tumbler. Oh, I ain't ready yet. I mean, go ahead. Welcome to this episode of 
We're gonna make cookies, so we're wearing an apron, but later we're gonna go hunting or GI Joe, <laughs> so we're wearing these. Dad's extra. And our, be our beautiful pants. aprons come from Lori. She sent us three aprons, one for me and Katie and Corey, Christmas aprons. They're just beautiful. Uh, Corey's is on the table there. We'll be sure to give her hers when we see her next time, which will probably be, if not today, tomorrow. So thank they're you, really Lori. pretty. Yeah, they're very, beautiful. Very beautiful. Thank Look at the you pocket, so much. Too. Perfect for making cookies. How many pockets I have? Yeah, we've got enough. So we're going to make Granny's Christmas cookies. These, of course, she didn't come up with this recipe. Lots of different people probably use it, but it's the same one that that's, we've been using since I was a little girl. And like I said, it has that little taste of orange. You can see the orange flecks, Katie. Oh, yeah. They just make it so good. I'm going to have to get us some flour, though, for extra flour for throwing out. Just a little bit. Maybe just a cup. So here's just a little bit of extra flour for rolling out. So well, I can work, you mean for me yeah. that I can work here and you can work here? Right, okay. yeah. So when I was little, Granny made them all the time and I thought they were so pretty because, you know, they'd be the shape of a tree, of, of Santa Claus, of whatever. And she would just, the same thing we still do today, just use them food coloring and white sugar, make some, some different colored sugars. And I just loved it. And then when we got older, she would let me and Paul help her. And well, me and Paul would be, we were kind of like Corey and Katie, we'd get really silly. <laughs> we'd get silly. So finally, we got to a certain age. She's like, you know what, y'all can, this is now your job. So then me and Paul would make them. And then, of course, once I was married, I started making them myself up here. And I would always let Corey and Katie help me. And kind of like Granny in those days, I would think every year, I'd think, why did I let them help me? Because <laughs> it would just end in, it was a lot gum. of fun, but it ended in a gum and lots of hysteria. And usually making, they would quit making the, uh, you know, the stars or the angels or whatever and start making like sideburn cookies and things like that. I did like that one year. I was like, yeah. oh yeah. So anyway, but lots of fun memories. For sure. So Katie and I are going to get to work and see how many cookies we can get done. So we got the cookies out of the oven. They've been cooling just a little bit, so we're going to try them. I have to show you, though, we did end up with one really weird one. I'm thinking, is that a sideburn, Katie? I don't know. I had to do something weird. You had though. to do something weird. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which one are you going to try? The bell. We tried something different this year than I've ever done before. Is that we put a little milk on top of the cookie and then we put the sugar on top of it to see if it would hold better. Katie put a lot on hers, which worked really good. I didn't put so much on mine, but I do think it made the sugar. I think it made it stick better. How Ooh, are they? They're really good. Can you taste the orange? That's my favorite mm -hmm. part. I can taste the orange. Mmm. Mmm. Tastes so much like Christmas. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh. Good job, Katie. Yay!
close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and take us to heaven to live with thee there. It's Christmas Eve, and we've got a lot we've got to get done today. We're going to celebrate tonight with Miss Cindy, so I've got stuff to get ready for that. Uh, Matt's going to make the oyster stew, but he'll do that later in the day. I want to start cooking for tomorrow, so there's a lot of things I want to do with preparation for that. But we've had a little hiccup because of the cold weather. It is so cold. Yesterday morning we got up, it was 5. The high that day was 11. This morning it was down to 2 degrees, which is really cold for, for here. Uh, and a lot of the South is experiencing those temperatures that they're not used to. But because of that, there's been such a demand on the power grid that they have us like our power's going off 15 minutes every hour. It's what it's been since 6 o'clock this morning. Maybe that'll get better through the day. But for now, that's kind of our, our hamper um, thrown kind of through a wrench in our Christmas cooking festivities. But we're not going to let that hamper us too much. We're going to just try to do the best we can. In between, every time the power goes off, I go do something that doesn't require electricity. I've been wrapping a few last-minute gifts this morning, things like that. I've got a good book going. I'm reading a good book, so I go read a few pages in it. So we're still having a wonderful day. Matt's got the wood stove going. I'm really thankful for that. My heart really goes out to people that don't have that in their houses that are just relying on that electricity. My heart goes out to all the wonderful uh, linemen and all the others, all the electrical workers and people that are working on days like this so that I can stay here and enjoy my day. So first up on my agenda is I still haven't got my haystacks made. I've tried like three days in a row uh, and just run out of time. So I'm going to do those. Katie has requested that I make some uh, rich crackers. I have, I think, townhouse crackers, but same thing. You put the peanut butter between them and then dip them in. Uh, we use almond bark, which is like white chocolate. She's requested I make some of those, so I'm going to do that. I want to make my cake today for tomorrow, my arsh potato cake. Uh, we usually do the dressing today and the sweet potatoes today so that we can just uh, warm them up tomorrow, put them in the oven for their last minute of cooking before everyone arrives. And I usually do my rolls on the day of whatever, if it's Christmas or Thanksgiving, but this year I was wanting to do them today, but now with the weird power thing, I don't know if that part's going to happen. Anyway, I'm going to start, I think, with those simple candies. There's eggs in the basement. Corey's like, I need eggs. I'm like, there's Sorry, eggs in the basement. I so we're <clears throat> making a little progress. I got the rich crackers, townhouse crackers is what I used, and then I got the haystacks made. And our power's not went off again, so I was like, I'll do one, and then I'll wait for the power to go off and come back on, but it's not. So maybe the maybe they fixed or whatever. Maybe it equaled out everywhere, so I hope so for everybody's Christmas, but also so that all those wonderful people doing that hard work can go home with their families. So now I'm about to, um, I want to start on my arsh potato cake, arsh tater cake. Corey's going to make us some eggnog. I, I've never really drunk eggnog when I was growing up. Did you, Matt? No, Matt says he didn't either. But Corey drank some, some one time when she was, I don't know, middle school age or something like that. And from then on, every year, she would want us to buy some. We would buy it at the store, um, just the kind that comes in a carton in the dairy section this time of the year. And then finally, I said, well, we should try to make our own. So we did one time, and it was really good. And maybe we made it another time or two, but we've not made it in a long time. But Corey decided she's going to make some today. So I, that was why she was wanting the egg. So she's going to start on that, and now I'm going to start on the cake. And what are you doing, Matt? Uh, I'm going to 
waiting to do what I'm told. <sighs> he's waiting to do what he's told. You've been tending the fire. You've been outside shooting your bow in this frigid weather. Yeah, trying to stay limbered up. Yeah. There's a few more days of hunting season left if I can get loose of all this. Yeah. <sighs> and it'll warm up. Yeah, and it will warm it's up too cold. some. Yeah, Our, it's so cold the chickens refuse to come out. Right. Uh, but anyway, so we're all here. Katie's. Um, I don't know what Katie's doing. I see her. She's in the. I'm brushing my teeth. She's brushing her teeth. That's what she's doing. Okay, so Corey, you're gonna start on the eggnog, and I'm gonna start on the cake. And I'm gonna get out of his way. So now I'm going to whip up the cake. This is an Arsh potato cake. It is my favorite cake of all cakes. I just love it. It's got black walnuts in it. It's a really old recipe. I have a video I'll link to about it, but it's my hands down my favorite cake. That I have some butter. I just added some sugar, and then I'm going to cream that together. Finally ready to ice my cake. It's gonna be so good. Let's see, I'm gonna put that in there. And then after that, I think we're almost ready for Miss Cindy to come. We'll start our Christmas festivities with her. Later tonight, we'll have to get our turkey ready. Uh, the way I do my turkey, I salt it and put it in the refrigerator overnight and let it kinda kind of drain out any kind of liquid that's in it so that it makes it really crispy and then that salt is just like kind of a dry brine I guess you would call it makes them for a really really moist turkey and Matt will of course have to do his his usual uh, deer roast he's got it over here thawing in the sink so that will be wonderful second layer of my cake kind of fell in in the middle, but it'll still taste so good. And that's what I worry about most is how things taste. Hmm. Okay, that will be so good tomorrow. It's better if it kind of sits overnight and, and marries together and all those, it just kind of gets moist inside and the icing or frosting kind of soaks down in. So this is gonna be delicious. Hmm.
it's Christmas morning. We're up and about and trying to get everything situated so we can have some family time opening our gifts. We always make muffins for Christmas morning, so we've got them right here. You can see there's some birthday candles. We always sing happy birthday to Jesus, so we're going to do that uh, in a few minutes. Corey made us a, what's it called, Corey, a frittata? Frittata. Frittata yesterday, and we're just warming it up last night, actually. And she's just, we're warming it up in the oven so that we can have that to go with it for our breakfast. Matt's got some coffee. Him and Austin's been having coffee. I've had my postum. I don't think the girls have had anything. But I'm going to call Granny and see if I can get her with my Christmas gift this year. I've already got Matt and Corey and Katie. Um, and I texted my brothers. I didn't didn't call them. But let's see if we can get Granny to answer the phone. I don't wake her up. It's not looking good. Hey, Christmas gift. <laughs> I was hoping you'd be granny. Sorry if I woke you up. Okay. Welcome up. I welcome up. Christmas gift. Oh, you got, got me. <laughs> you got me. I'm sorry I woke y'all up. It's seven o'clock. I figured you'd be up. Okay. Okay. Well, we just wanted to tell you Merry Christmas, and you got me this year, so you're one up on me. Yeah. Okay. We we love you, and we'll see you after a while. Okay. I'm looking forward to. Okay. Bye bye. You want us to come about three? Yeah, that's what they said. All right, love you. I'm going to bring the green beans. Okay, that will be great. Everybody will be wanting to eat those green beans. Okay. Okay, love you. Love you. Bye. Uh, <coughs> well, Granny got me this year. Last year I was able to get her, but I woke Paul up, so that's, that's not good. But he'll get over it. Okay, we're all gathered in here. Matt and Austin are over here goofing instead of being in the video. Oh, Mom, call them out. Uh, we're gonna. They're they're anxious to eat though. They can smell Corey's wonderful frittata. I mean, did you well, like yeah, this? Well, yeah, I light, I I put one for oh, okay. them and then they're not. So we'll Sorry. do theirs too, I guess. <coughs> okay. God, this life's hard to. Strike is yeah. hurting me. Okay. Okay. Ready, Corey? Ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday. 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 Now we can eat. Now we eat. We got through having some family time while we were opening presents, wonderful time together. There was two presents that I got that it was really special this year, and I'm going to share the story with you a little bit later, so I'll be sure to tell you about them. 
Another gift that I got from Matt, I'm actually using, it's right over here where you can't see, but it's one of those large roasters. I've been wanting one of those so that I could do apple butter in it, so maybe I could do tomato sauce or anything like that in the summer, thinking about canning, making chicken broth, uh, different, maybe my turkey broth after I get the turkey done today. Um, so that I could use a big, something big like that, that I didn't have to take up the stove or the oven. You know, anyway, I've been wanting one, so Matt got me one. And since he got it, I said, let's try doing the turkey in it. So we've got the turkey actually in it. And that'll free up our stove for the other things I've still got to do. I've got my rolls, the first rise going. They're really ready now to shape into rolls and then let the second rise happen. Corey's been in here helping me and Matt and Austin and Katie have been in the living room cleaning up, sweeping up our mess and straightening up. And then they've also been outside kind of rearranging the cars because when Granny gets to come, she'll need to get close to the door. So that's where we're at right now. We've had a wonderful day so far and I know it will just continue as the day goes on. So it's time for me to put the tablecloths on and kind of try to decorate the table. I'm, I'm going to have to try a few different ones, but this is one of them that I, I hope to try. Granny made this years ago. It's just white or kind of a muslin color, but you can see it's got this wonderful little trim on it that's like a, has Christmas trees on it. So I'm going to try that one. This is one that I think Belva Jean Mooner sent to me. I think that's where it come from. And it's just a, a store-bought one, but so pretty. Look at those beautiful Christmas trees with the little, little polka dots around the edge. And then I have some of the little napkins that Granny's made over the years. This one's got little sprigs of holly, really pretty. And these are just green and red, but I always loved these. I've used these over the years for doilies and around little Christmas trees and all kinds of things. So for this one, neither of the little um, napkins I got out worked, but Granny made this too, so I found it. It was in my buffet, so we put it down. And Corey got me these wonderful Christmas trees, Corey and Austin, for Christmas. They, they're, I guess, some type of ceramic, but they're really pretty, and I like them. So that made the perfect centerpiece. So for this table, I ended up layering Granny's napkins, and I should have ironed all this, but I'm not ironing it. It'll, it'll be fine. Nobody won't notice that. I still think it's pretty. And Corey and Austin also got me this. I, I picked this one out for myself when Corey and Katie and I got to go Christmas shopping back in the fall. It's just lovely. I want to leave it out all the time, at least all winter. It's so beautiful with the bird and the light. Are we ready? We're going to say the prayer. Who's ready? All right, let's say the prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this occasion, what it means. Help us to remember what Christmas is all about. We just uh, thank you for everything you've done for us. Help us to be better to one another every day. And we thank you for all this food, all these blessings, 
our health, our life, our strength, and our family. And we ask these things in Jesus' name today. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. One, two, three. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's the end of Christmas Day. It's been a wonderful day. We've had such a great Christmas this year. Uh, lots of different reasons why. We have so many things to be thankful for. We have our family. We have Austin, our new son, Katie's new brother, Corey's husband. It's been wonderful uh, to have him with us this year. There's just been all kinds of different things. All the wonderful generosity from people like you that watch our videos. Um, I just can't name all the many blessings. We're all well. We're healthy. We got some a, a new baby and two new babies on the way. Just a glorious time for our family. So I, I'm happy that you come along with us for this Christmas and that you got to be part of it. I want to share two quick little stories with you that some of my favorite things, two of my favorite things that I got this year for Christmas. I'll start with this one. It's kind of sm it's a big one and a small one. This is from Katie. I hope that you can see the and see the wonderful detail as I turn it around. See the so it's an elephant. So you're probably thinking, why does Tipper want an elephant? Not that elephants aren't great, but when she's so crazy about Appalachia, look at its tail. Can you see that? Amazing. If you can see the see its eyes and its kind of its little its ears, how its ears are, so amazing. So the story of this is, it, it true, elephants are not in Appalachia, but this was created in Appalachia by Ben Hall, probably in the 1940s, I would guess. And he was part of a group called the Brasstown Carvers. And amazing, Katie found this and she got it for me for Christmas. I did not even know that the Brasstown Carvers did elephants. Katie knew that. She's, she's a big history buff as far as they go and a, and a collector of many of their older pieces. So this is a really old one, and it's just lovely. It's just beautiful. And she knew prior, prior to uh, finding it that they did elephants, so that's how she's got a good eye. She says some, um, she has a little feeling every time she knows there's a Brasstown carving out there wanting to come home. But this is real treasure, knowing that now it's back in Brasstown, um, and, it, and it's just unique, and it's so well done, so well done. So that would be from the 1940s, Katie told me. Just beautiful. So I really love that. I love the history. Every time Katie finds one of those old carvings, she's, she likes to think of it as she's bringing them back home to Brasstown. So I'm thrilled, thrilled with that one. I'm going to put him right there. The other one, you can probably see this big, beautiful quilt is right in front of me. If I hold up. I can't hold the whole thing up, but you can kind of see the, see the patterns. I guess you would call this like a, I don't know if you'd call it a patchwork quilt. I'm not a quilter, as you can tell. Scrap. A scrap quilt made out of scraps, but it's just lovely, isn't it? It's just beautiful, and you can see the wonderful, the, where the long arm quilted it on the back and the binding. But just look at all those beautiful colors. So it's really beautiful. Well, when I opened it, Corey said, uh, it was from Corey, Corey and Austin, and I said that, um, I don't know what I said. I was like, oh, where did you get this? Did I so-and-so make it or something? And Kate Corey said, no, you don't remember. And I said, no, I don't remember. She said, well, you've seen it before. You've seen the quilt top before. And I said, really? And then she reminded me, back in the summer, we had the opportunity to go to my, my grandmother's house, Gazzy's house, and look around and, and go through some things. There's not much left there, and a lot of what is is in really, really poor condition and poor shape. And there was a few blankets, and we took them, a few quilts. And the ones that I brought home and I tried to gently wash, they just disintegrated. They fell apart. And Corey took one or two home, and some of those fell apart too. But this one, 
and she had told me I just forgot the the it was just a quilt top it wasn't quilted did not fall apart so she kept it and she was going to have it quilted but so then she immediately once you know she realized it was it was torn in, in a few places but but overall it was still okay and it does have stains it's I don't know if I could find one I'd show you well right there's one so you can see it's stained in the fabric there that didn't come out whatever that stain is anyway she said she quickly realized the best thing to do with it would be to take it to the quilt our local quilt shop and ask them if they could fix it ask them if it was worth worth salvaging and if they could you know bind it and quilt it and then she would give it to me for Christmas so that's what she did so I couldn't believe it I just can't believe it those the things that we got that day were in such poor shape I just can't believe it turned out this beautiful and then just priceless to me because I know it was Gazzy's and then Corey went to all that work to do it. She figured all that out for me. You know, it was so nice. It made me cry. And then when I cried, Corey cried. <laughs> so then we were all crying. Uh, we had a lot of tears today, but they were all good tears. So between this wonderful, wonderful quilt, uh, it's just beautiful. It's hard to believe if, if you could have just seen what it looked like then. And Corey did tell me it, it made it through the washing machine, but I totally forgot about it. Between then and now, I hadn't thought anything else about it but I'm glad she did. So, but between it and the wonderful elephant that Katie got me, uh, and of course I got some other nice things. Matt got me some wonderful things. It's just been a, a blessed day. Not so much the gifts, but just the wonderful family that we've, we've been together today and the spirit that's been here, a good spirit, good fellowship, good food, all those things. And we really appreciate you, and we hope that you enjoyed seeing part of our Christmas this year. And as always, we just hope that you'll continue to drop back by often as we celebrate Appalachia.